online culture-based education. As you folks can see, let's give them a nice round of applause. It's amazing. We'll go ahead and turn it over to them. As you guys can see, the video has beginning has recorded. We thank you guys for sharing this space with us. And of course, on with the show, we turn it over right on to you folks. Mahalo. Hey, aloha. Aloha kako. Kaleo, I think you should just continue. I think you should just carry on and take it over. <laughs> You're more entertaining than we are. <laughs> aloha, aloha kako. Um, Poke, you want to start us up? Hey, hey, hey. Aloha and aloha and aloha. I'm Poke Anogomayer. I'm the exec director of Awaiaulu. I was a teacher at the University of Hawaii at Manoa for some 35 years. Um, and we'll tell about the origins of Awaiaulu afterwards. But can we introduce yourself, uh, Koi and Kali? Yeah, I'm uh, Koi Sai Dudua. I, um, I was the director of the Ho'olaupa'i Hawaiian Language Newspaper Project um, that brought that all up, joined up with Awaiaulu in 2009. Um, I'm also, I will just plug, I'm a mother of 12, grandmother of 17, which well. is why I do what I do. Yo, yo. Go ahead, Kalei. I am Kalei Roberts. Uh, I am one of the mentors in, with Iwaiolu and currently working on this Keep Up a project that we're going to get into today. Um, also, a um, Molokai High School Olalo Hawaii teacher. Mahalo. Mahalo. So now you, Pokia, go Iwaiolu. Okay, yeah, well, Iwaiolu if you're not familiar, has been around for a long time, it seems, We're kind of a low-key operation. But we uh, actually started, in a way, in the early 90s. Immersion was all over. Um, Hawaiian language was really uh, burgeoning. And there was a need for books for adults. So we established um, a project to make a Hawaiian book for adults we pulled all of the materials from Samuel Kamakau's columns and published them just in the Hawaiian. And it was a sort of a breakthrough piece, but that's what put us into the newspapers intensely. Because at that time, of course, the technology was, we did it all from microfilms and originals. So everything was copied and then typed into the computer and it was a, a different time, a different technology but it exposed us to what else was there and it really opened things up. In 2000, there was a project started, new technology allowed digital images of newspapers. And so that very seminal piece started off by 2002, created Ho'olaupai, which was really an industry of creating digital images and putting them up. In the course of that, with my nose in the newspapers, I ended up doing a PhD on how Hawaiian newspapers had existed, how they had, in effect, disappeared, and did a PhD dissertation called Mai Pa'ai Kaleo. My friend and colleague, Duena Kilastillo, read that overnight, came to me the next day and said, well, what are you doing about it? Um, because if there's a million or two million pages of material in Hawaiian, and we're publishing Hawaiian things. There's 95% of the Hawaiian population can't read what we do, and 99% of the general population can't. So we have to put this out bilingually. He said, it's not about language, it's about knowledge. And everyone needs this knowledge. So in 2003, we established Aweaulu. And the idea was for me to mentor young, already fluent scholars to become translators because this material had been out of hand for over a century. It wasn't incorporated into what anyone was learning. So there was grammar, vocab, and logic that just didn't match what was in the classrooms of our, our best second language speakers. So I took on two uh, young scholars, uh, Kamali Kuwara and Sahoa Fukushima, and we worked for two years and translated in a process where they would take a piece. Um, the next day, we would sit together, go line by line through their pieces. And I would do a, a longer piece, and we'd go line by line through mine. 
And when they started off with a paragraph, they ended up with blocks of two and three pages. So we just built that capacity over a couple of years, ended up with the epic tale of Hiiake Ikapoli Opele, Tomo Olelo, or Hiiake Ikapoli Opele, came out in 2007, 2006 is the copyright date. Um, it showed that it worked and we could produce not only resources, you know, published books, but we could do resource people because both of them developed a real confidence in handling historical and older material, uh, being able to, to answer all the riddles that come up in that process. So um, we kept Awaiolu operating while I was teaching over at the university. And then in 2013, we did several of the projects in the meantime, but 2013, we reached out to Calais and Kamuela Yim and brought them in. And we translated uh, as a two year agreement, translated Ke Kumo Aupuni, which was the first third of Kamakau's history. And it was the first book we had published. Um, in two years, we ended up with a, a draft translation of that. We spent more time with them. Uh, buffing that one step further. But after two years, we asked them to each take on two. This was the model that we wanted to create, was that they become trainers in training for two people. And now we had a team of six. We jumped in and, and I didn't mention, but Kaui was in that first translation team, but ended up stepping aside, becoming uh, the history uh, resource person for that and running every other part of the operation. But the uh, second wave of this, the second two year span, we ended up translating another book with the two teams under the um, training of Kamuela and Calais. So we had four that after two years of that, we invited each of them to bring on two more. So now well, we the have- The second, I just, wanna, I just wanna add here, the second book that we translated was Kimo'i, Kamakau's second uh, set of works. We split it now, into third. And Koei, I sent you some book covers if you wanted to show them, but we can show them later. Okay. But those books are out there. They're in Hawaiian. Now they're coming out in English. The second book was uh, Keo Punimo'i, the second third of Kamakau's writings. And when those four took on two under each of them, and we added one more. So now we had nine, four, and two. Um, they now took on two tomes. One was all the writings of John Papa E. E. and the other teams under Kamuela, or they, Kamuela took on E. E. and Kalei's team took on the last part of Samuel Kamakau's history. And so in the course of two years, we now finish those two tomes. Um, now with, what? Um, 14 people in training and, and trained. Some of them have already spent six years at this. Um, they didn't want to stop. We didn't feel that anything was completed. So we set up a new project called Ma Hua Hua. And I'm really excited about how this has gone. They were all already skilled at different levels, but Ma Hua Hua broke the 12 um, main trainees into four teams with Kalei and Kamuela still over them now as mentors. And each team would spend two years broken into four cycles. And each six month cycle would focus on a single um, topic. They would pick a topic, but do every kind of Hawaiian material related to that topic. Look, so there's a research element, there's a documenting element, and then a translation and development of resource um, element. So they would look through what's in the newspapers, what's in government docs, what's in letters, and create a database of untranslated Hawaiian material on that topic. They would then select, because they might find 500 pieces on that one topic. They would then select every week pieces to translate, three, four, five pages each. They would go through that with their mentor and then bring that to me, and we'd finish that up buff it into a shape that we had created a bilingual um, Hawaiian on the left, English on the right, and put that into what was called an ohina. And the ohina is the database itself and all the translated material. After six months, 
they would move on to a new topic. We tried to have them select the topic that would interest them. Um, we'll walk through what those topics were. Uh, and we are just wrapping up our third Ohina, our third six month cycle and stepping into our last one here. In the middle of this, this has been a remarkable process that I believe is really exportable to other, uh, other <clears throat> groups that are trying to revitalize both language and knowledge. Because this idea of creating a, a training area that develops resources at the same time, this team has created it's going to be about four or five thousand pages of newly translated material but it's also created 14 people who are really highly confident at what they're doing with historical material um, most other culture groups and uh, you know, native peoples do not have the body of resources that hawaii is blessed to have this is a historical remarkable um sort of resource but they all have things that could be utilized in this in this methodology and we really find it works well um, you just need a couple of crazy people to run the thing so we are um, in our finishing our third cycle of this and in the end of the second cycle and now we're going to move into talk about keep papa um, this new project emerged. Kaui had created an idea to fulfill a need. We pulled our two mentors off of handling the, the teams and put the teams directly responsible to themselves and then to me. So individuals did their translation. They met as a group, reviewed their own material and upgraded it, brought that to me, and we sit. I review it first, and then we sit and walk through it line by line. It is remarkably productive. Their confidence is built, and Kamuela and Kalei's expertise was able to be directed elsewhere. So Kipapa emerged and built on the foundation of these uh, young scholars who can, and the idea of the need that's out there, Kipapa came to be. Um, Kaui, do you want to take us into Kipapa? <laughs> Well, we whipped through all of Oweulu. That was cool. I was warned to not, because <laughs> <laughs> actually, that's it's a long and wonderful story, and you know <laughs> we can go a long ways with it. Um, and there's a lot of other elements to Oweulu uh, that yeah. would be worthy. But I really believe that Kipapa, as a as an outcome, the model that Mahuahua created is an exciting model, and we want to be able to write it up, present it, and offer it to other groups that would make use of this. But it was out of Mahuahua that Kipapa emerged. I've always felt that what we were doing was unpacking an historical repository. It's like a treasure chest. And Awaiaulu has been you know, training people to unpack that treasure chest. I've laughingly said that for years, we throw gold nuggets up onto the plains and good luck with that. Now, Kipapa is a project that takes those gold nuggets and turns them into jewelry in a way. I mean, it takes it another step because what we were producing is still difficult to make use of if you're not really dedicated, if you're not pretty fluent in Hawaiian and can make the connections. Even though we're translating everything, it can still be very dense. Um, a little disconnected and we're working with a history that was fractured for a hundred years so lots of things come up and it doesn't seem to even connect to what we know and it's until you start to pull those threads back together and see how that fits in um, and that's part of the process key papa is doing that they're taking multiple gold nuggets and being able to put the links together and make it into vignettes, historical vignettes in a way. So I'm excited about how that is moving forward. <clears throat> so with that, I think Kaui, walk us into Kipapa. Okay, I just wanna, um, two points on what Poika said. We, in 2013, we started the translation training pyramid program 
um, as a response to a, to have a successorship program in place for poor care. Poor care has macular degeneration and his eyesight has diminished over the eight years. So this was our plan to get the most out of him while he still could. So that's one thing. The second thing is on the digitization of the newspaper project. The way we are able to search them is not because we digitize the images because you can't search a digitized image, right? You can't search it. You need the OCR. The OCR component, the optical character recognition component, is what allows the searchability on newpeva.org and Papa Kilo. Just to make those two notes. We were going to kind of walk you through Papa Kilo because what we found in the course of our work is that many people don't know how to use Papa Kilo. Hold a whole nother session for how to access all this. Um, um, yeah, okay, I'll let you know. We'll do another session where we walk you through uh, um, Papa Kilo because we should jump into Key Papa because there is so much to, to cover. Um, but, Kaui, yeah. can, I, can I just butt in on you, Kaui? Go just go. to say, you know, whether we do a workshop or not, do learn to use Papa Kilo. <laughs> Don't be intimidated. It's yeah. like learning to use a phone book, for heaven's sake. I mean, this incredible resource sits there. And I throw it up. We could do a little quick. We could do a qu quick walkthrough. What do you think? Um, I, I'd be leery of it. Well, you ran through your part early, so we could, we can, five minutes. We can, you guys Jump want up. to? Go do you guys it. want Go to do a public kilo walkthrough? Okay. Real quick. Okay. How do I do that again? And bear with me. I mean, I don't know what we're doing here. Am I sharing screen now? Um, no, you're no. Pretty lovely. Open share tray. Okay, here we are. Hey. Uh, yep, yeah, you got share. it. Okay, okay. So you can see this, right? Yes, we can. So when you go to Papa Kilo, that's papakilodatabase.com, and you come to the bottom, the last one, search new Peppa. You search there. You have three different, can you see this on the top? You have three different search options. Browse newspaper by title, browse by date, or browse by place. So the most common one is by date if you're searching for a thing. If you want to look at the different newspapers, it'll bring you up if you know what publication you're trying to search. You go there. If you're looking for an actual date, it'll give you all the years. So the ones that are lit up that are in blue, those are the years that there are issues. The ones in blocks, no more issues. So you go through here and you can go to the date that you want. The most common one is a search, right? You do a search. So let's just put in, uh, I don't know, Kauai. So you do a search for Powahi and it comes up with 6,849 times in the newspapers, just the ones that have been digitized and OCR'd where they find Powahi. If you go to the panels on the side here, it'll tell you what publications they're in, where the publications were and what kind we have. So 3,646 are articles, 1856, seven, 857 pages, Advertisements, illustrations, it tells you the decades that the, the articles are in. So you can, if you know what you're looking for, you go to these. If you want to go 1890, 1899, you click there and only those will come up. Um, oh, goey, goey, goey. Can yes. I just throw in, do the quotation marks Pawahi Pisha and show how that narrows. Yeah, I, was, I was going there next. Oh, okay, just checking. Hawaii Bishop. Okay, so if you put quotation marks around them, it's going to search for just this term throughout the newspapers. It's for multiple terms. Right, so here you find only 62 of Hawaii Bishop, right? So that's how you get specific terminology. I should take out that and do that search again. Okay, there we go. I took out the search term I had. So Hawaii Bishop is 777 times. You can see the results. See this here. You see my my um, mouse. You can see as many 200 to 20 results at a time. Th this button here. You see this best match first. It's really I don't know why what that means, but when I'm searching, I'm always searching for time time frames. 
So I go to date oldest first, or if you want newest, and you put it in the order that you want. This button here, so say that you want all of this. You want all of these findings. This button here, you press this and it allows you, so I would put it at 200. It allows you to download all these search hits in one spreadsheet. So it, it really takes your research time down because you can pull them all down and get it in one search. We, I harassed Kalehanis to create that button for Awayoru. So you're playing the difference between page and article. Oh, perhaps. see. So you're going to find these. If this comes up, this is a transcription. And mostly this was done by Ike Ko'oko'a. So it's a transcription of this. And it'll highlight whatever you're searching for. So if you scroll down, you look for the highlighted term. And there you'll see Powahi Bishop. But this is not reliable. I mean, it's, it's a clue. So you want to go to the original image. So you come up here on the top. And you see this here, it has the newspaper name, page three, and then the date. You click there to go the original newspaper. And it'll take you to the, these are the originals. And here you search through your originals. To the side here, if it's uh, type scripted, you'll see it and you can see the titles. So if you know what you're looking for, you can find it here. Now, if say you want to research something, you want to reserve something. Great. You want to save this. You want to save this article here, right? So you click it so it's highlighted. You click this button here. It's a scissors. Click it. And it'll cut out that image for you. Then you can just save it. Save this article down to your thing. Or you want to get the link where you can just save this article in a, in a spreadsheet. So those are the couple of ways to... Get oh, you can I dive in here that if, yeah. if you're not fluent in Hawaiian, but you're able to, to dig around in these, um, if you come to someone like me and say, oh, can you help me look up Bernice Poway Bishop? Uh, no, I can't. I mean, there's really, it's too much. <laughs> but if, if you've played around in Papa Kilo database, you've clipped six articles, you can make enough sense out of it to say, this seems to be the one where she went to Boston, da, da, something, something. Right. Um, bring that to me. I can help you. So well, there's really, a, there's you a lot of this. people. I mean, you have access today to people who can help you. Oh, it's, well, it's that's, much more prevalent me. than it used to be. You know, so reach out to friends, but use this resource. It's really, it's a valuable um, resource. So we don't all have learn, to live in Wonderland anymore. Learn you know? to do it's the really, groundwork. Do some of the initial groundwork, get yourself familiar, and you won't be asking your resource people to really do the whole job. Make sense? All right, all right, all right. Let's move into Keep Papa. Keep Papa. Um, so in, um, you know, the pandemic hit, we, Awayolu Mahuahua folk functions, pr pretty much um, we virtually is how Mahuahua was set up. All our teams live on different islands, one in Aotearoa, and we meet three times a week, four or five, six times a week meetings go on, but it's all virtual uh, over Skype. So when the uh, pandemic hit, it didn't really affect our, our, our project. Um, what it did affect is one of our um, deliverables for a grant that we had for this was to do two public presentations for teachers to to bridge what we do for, for educators, right? To help get into classrooms. Then the pandemic hit, that all got canceled. We had two things set up at Washington Place, that all got canceled. So we had to figure out a way to, um, to, to still meet that deliverable. So we had a team meeting in July, a virtual retreat, and we talked to our team. About 90% of our um, translators of our team are teachers. They teach at universities, private schools, Kalean Moloka'i. I mean, they teach all over. Hina, who is the one third partner of Kalopiko, she does all her Hawaiian language things through Kalopiko. Um, you know, so we're, they're all there. And they predominantly said, our teachers don't need to attend one more professional development. They don't have funding to, to, to pay for professional development. They need uh, reliable, Hawaiian language material 
primary source material and they need curriculum. So that's what that's the feedback from our own team. Um, so we sat down and we said, OK, OK, well, what are we going to do here? So um, this was in July, mind you. So in July, we had we had worked through this plan and thought, OK, we'll build a thing. We'll do a thing. We'll put together some things. Well, you know, what we were really wanting to do was an avenue to take the ohina, the little collections that we that we create through Mahuahua, and and have a place to 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 export them to the community, right? But when we first were diving in, we only had three months between when we wanted to do, we thought to do it, and we're going to launch it, and we thought, well, we'll pick the two lowest hanging fruit just as a proof of concept to one prove to ourselves that we can do this and to um, do something that's readily available and, and, and pertinent in the time in November. If we launched in November, La Ko'oko'a is November 28th. So if we do La Ko'oko'a and then you can't do La Ko'oko'a without doing La Ho'i Ho'ia. So we do the two, we launch in November, close in December and see how this all works. So, Kalei, um, Kamuele Yim, and I, uh, we work like dogs for three months, no sleep, swear to God, um, to put together Kipa. Um, we went a little overboard. We added melee. We added, uh, there was games. There, we, just, we just went a little berserk on um, putting it together. But that's pretty much. Kalei, you want to say something about the, the, the working it into Kipa and, and our crazy three months? Um, I do think that Kamu had noticed that these two events that we focused at first, Keep Papa release, were uh, gaining traction as far as attention uh, for our own people. Uh, he had witnessed the La Ho'i Ho'i events really gaining some popularity and a lot of people wanting more information. And so that really was one of those pivot points for us to decide, okay, let's let's jump ahead of the next one. and. Like Auntie Koei had mentioned, they both go together. And for those of you who aren't familiar with both our holidays, I, this is a great resource for you to kind of jump into that, that educational resource that we created eventually, which I'm sure Auntie Koei will mention later. <laughs> so one of the first things that we did, like to give us a, all of this, mind you, is trying to build a resource to, to flow Mahuahua into, right? To flow our Ohina into. But here's the thing with learning, you know, language history, language and culture. History is often overlooked. And if we don't know our history, then we can't celebrate our achievements and we can't teach our children our history so they will know the story of our people, right? There's often, I mean, I'm all for language, culture, but without history, it's all it's missing a component, right? So we decided that if we just keep throwing up our ohina, but you don't understand the historical context that it drops into, you know, it, it's wrong. So we built this first as our guide for Kipapa. So this is a historical timeline. Um, can you can you all see this? Yeah. So we built this timeline, and this is kind of our Bible that we're going by. To the left of the blue is um, our ohina that we've created in Mahuahua. To the right is a historical timeline. And if you don't understand the right, you won't understand the importance of the ohina and how they play into the historical timeline. So our goal in Kipapa is to build build up both sides of these timelines so everybody will have a better understanding of history. So that's how we're approaching Keep Up. Any questions on that? That's that. <laughs> Colleague, can I just can I just mention that we're using history not as its own topic, just sort of as a as a playing field, because in history we're finding ways to use math, science, you know, culture, um, all the different fields of study, language, but history is the playing field. 
We built Kipapa. This is there. There, I'm sure there were some glitches in the entry uh, because we threw this all up on a wing and a prayer and hoped it would work and that people would be able to get in and they'd gain access. So this is what you enter when you come into Kipapa, and there's a couple of things. These are our surveys that if anybody really didn't do a survey yet, but you came in, please do. We created a supplemental reading room because depending on how deep or shallow you want to go into history, you know, you can just skirt through this or if you want to dig in. We created this room and it's all connected to these books that are online, that are on the shelf. Here are the, the uh, original material so you can download that and take it all. So everything on the shelf you can grab and take yourself. Wall are four films that we shared for you, uh, video resources. This is Uamaukea, uh, a documentary that I did about Hawaii's history a couple of years ago. Um, these three are three parts of Conrad Lihilihi did Language of a Nation. We got permission to share it on Kipapa so that people can go there. So if you're looking for, you know, resources, here are resources. Uh, so we did that. And then we created this. One of the things we did was Mele. So this was a song, um, Kale Mo'i, that Pokia had written. When did you write this, Pokia? Oh. Yeah, a couple years, years ago. Right. But he wrote it for because he wanted the children to, to know the names of our eight sovereigns and something about them. Because when, you know, before when we do pre and post tests, when we do talks, You'd, uh, and these are un university students, and you'd ask them to name the eight sovereigns. They couldn't, not by name. So he wrote this song, and we put it together. I asked Kavika Kahiapu to go into studio in the pandemic. He was so cool. He did that. We have that. I'll play the song in a minute. We created this as a little thing to help the teachers with something about each of the mo'i, um, a little bit about them, some pictures, some just as another tool to teach the kids. So we created that. You have the words in Hawaiian and English um, there with the translations. This is the thing I posted on social media, but this is the song. Um, I'll just play a short, short touch of this. <laughs> That's enough. <laughs> so there's that. Uh, we also have this other mele that Puake also wrote. Yeah. You just wrote this last year, right? This one is last yeah. year. Yeah, actually we wrote it for Restoration Day because oh, right, we right. Some wow. were lamenting restoration and uh, I said, but look at what has been restored. Celebrate what has been restored. You know, not nationhood yet, but celebrate. We'll just play a little of this. Yeah. Sorry to keep cutting you guys off. <laughs> I'm not going to show the whole uh, the whole thing. The words are also available in Hawaiian and English here. So we have three mele that are um, part of Kipapa. So then when you come out, you see the two events. So this is La Kuokoa and La Hoi Hoia. You go into La Kuokoa, you come in and you choose. You want to see the material in English or you want to see it in Hawaiian. 
So we'll just walk into the Hawaiian side. On the Hawaiian side, there's a, these are kind of a cool thing that we kind of invented um, in building Kipapa. The topic itself, La Coco, is such a huge, huge event. It takes four years almost for this whole thing to um, unfold. But how do we take this huge event and bring it down into something that's, you know, um, uh, swallowable or, 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 you know, that you can hold? So I created 16 bullet points. Each one has a, a little um, narrative. The cool thing about this is they're hyperlinked. So you click this, it'll take you to, all right, let me switch access. It'll take you to a folder that has the documentation that backs up that statement. So all the way through here, at each point, you can go to different, different uh, documents. So that is cool and that is for teachers um, to have access ready at their fingertips. We did a, I did a narrative presentation in case, just so you understand the whole breadth of the story, uh, I created a narrative presentation of it that walks you through the detail of La Ko'opo'a with documents as we go. Okay. So that's there. And then um, this is also, there's an index of all the material, the documentation that we have are listed on an index. So this is kind of the finding aid that we created for the material that we uh, put together. Um, these are the resources. And then we have the Ha'avina. Kalei, you want to talk about these? Kalei created every the curriculum for La Kuokoa. Um, yeah, so we're all struggling in this pandemic to deliver uh, quality education virtually. And, and I really wanted to kind of meet that challenge with this historical event and do it justice, not only for teachers who have to use it, but for our students to be excited in using it. So um, a lot of the law Kuoko'a uh, Ha'avina have been modified to be used virtually. Uh, and this is the the guide that I made for our teachers in the, is this Olelo site? Oh yeah, this yeah. is our Kayapuni side. And I think that's one of the things that we really wanted to highlight in Kipapa as well, is we're always trying to get a lot of our Kayapuni and our Olelo Hawaii Ha'avina created. Um, starting from that perspective that with our Hawaiian language students in mind. So we really, Kamu and I, when we were creating these Ha'avina, we really wanted to keep our Haumana Olelo Hawaii in mind first. So um, it's all tabbed out to use just like your virtual slide decks use and it's um, separated into grade bands. Yeah. So uh, Malao to Papa Ekolu, kindergarten to third, fourth through sixth, seventh through eighth, ninth through twelfth. And uh, each of those tabs will show the specific lesson for those grade bands. And we even did uh, an escape room lesson. Uh, and what's really cool, which she's not going to mention this, but what's really cool is she made an audio thing to guide you through it. And so each one of the grade levels, Hello, you can my slide. And she directs uh, you. No ke kula ha -ha -a e manao. Hihi uh, ke ia na inoa. Uh, no ke lana ki ia homana whakahi. Ke oi kakaahi ki ia haabina. Uh, kahi ao ao he ao ao no ka ho ulu ulu pokole ana uh, i kamo ola lo kala ku o koa he liki me kumo ke make aya o e ki ano ka hai ana i kumo ola lo aya me liki me ko na omana uh, mana ono iya mo ola lo liki uh, okay that's also all available in English right right English and Hawaiian on both all sides all the resources. Okay. Clay? Oh, then each each grade band also has uh, an escape room created in Google Slides to, to give them some fun aspect, of, an incentive to really learn the material. And uh, yeah, so we're going to experience it a little bit. 
I know we have a bunch of Olala Hawaii people in the room, so let's. O kekii hea o Luna, kekii o Timoteo Haalilio, o Hawaiian language speakers who know who Timoteo Haalilio may be. Which number? First, second, third, or fourth? I can't see anybody, so you tell yeah, me. Yeah, Nagoa which... says the second one. We got a lot of twos. Number two. Okay. A oya. So if you get it correct, you escape the room uh, to tie in a bunch of other Why is this? You're progressing. Yeah. Um, and then we tried to incorporate uh, different uh, lessons to not make it limited to history, but maybe in early elementary, you do a lot of numerical forms of dates and months and counting so we try to incorporate that so try to make it a little more fun in their learning of the material but also connect it back to some of the standards that we're hitting as teachers to create a relevance yeah so that's kind of the professor harder as you go through the the grade bands i did hear that uh Kamehameha schools middle school where my sister teaches used it in their homeroom activity for the day and Though quite, escape, <laughs> quite a bit escape the escape room, there were quite a bit that didn't make it out. So, so, so if you hit the wrong answer, then it does that. Here we go again. So that was a cool uh, Kale created. Um, I think that's pretty much key, Papa. Um, that's all we have to show oh. you. We also oh, yeah. did the same thing exists for La Hoi Hoya and Kamuela did, Kamuela Yim worked on those. Um, so you can see the material that he did here, the curriculum that he built. So there's a guide for teachers, but then there's this, this is about a feast, an article that was in the newspaper about the feast of La Ko'oko'a, uh, La Ho'i Ho'ia. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So he talks about this feast and how they name, how all the Konohiki bought, you know, a pig, a chicken, some pigs, chickens, you know, cow, whatever. And this is the English translation. So he does a lesson about counting and the Hawaiian way of counting in fours, as opposed to the Western way of counting in tens. And that if you look again at that count, did the did, did certain man only bring one chicken or did he bring a ka'au? Did he bring a lao? Did he bring a kona of, of moa, right? So this is the lesson that he did for uh, la hoi hoia. So yeah, I think. Um... Uh, Kaui, I just want to toss in that Kamala also did geometry and how many people can be seated at a table and right. etc. Yeah, right. Again, to step away from history as a portal to other fields. Right. So there's a um, lot of um, uh, there's all kind of things, and we threw the kitchen sink at this first one. Um, <laughs> We've gotten a lot of questions as to why begging us to please don't close or begging us to reopen or or after we close where I got tons of emails almost weekly asking, um, please let me just get in. I just need to. So so the reason that we had to close because this was a Hail Mary, swear to God, no budget, no plan, no, you know, we just boom. So we built it on Google Drive, we connected it from our website, and we just hail married that it would work. Um, but one of the things about Google Drive is you cannot get analytics. We can't, um, Google Drive doesn't allow you. I've tried everything, believe me. They, they used to allow it a couple of years ago, but about three, four years ago, they removed that option for users of Google Drive. So you can't get any kind of analytics in the, which is really without, you know, we need to get funding to continue to do to provide this resources so the analytics will help us uh, go there but, but we, we also need those analytics to 
to make it effective for teachers. If we can see right. who's pulling what, how right. much time is being spent on different areas, that's really helpful for us developing the pieces of it. Right. And of course, when it is up, you can download every single thing on Key Papa into your own drive, right. and then you don't, you're not reliant on the website anymore. Um, right. so those who miss the window, come back in June. Yeah, yeah. so um, we took it down so that we are right now working on building a permanent um, site that would work better for a collections kind of thing that we are building. Um, that we will launch in June and hopefully will open up in June and it will be permanent. It will be a permanent. And just just to let everybody know, all the resources that were there in the first Kipapa will also be there. You know, so it's going to be a building block. We're going to keep building to the timelines as as this goes. Um, so everything in that one infographic I showed you of the timeline, eventually all of that will be on Kipapa. Um, I've also reached out in the building of the historical side of the little collections. Um, in this next round, I had reached out to four um, experts in, in their fields. Um, Willie Kawai, whose PhD is on Hawaiian nationality, he is doing the 16 points and giving me the base for that. Um, Donovan Preza, who got an award for his master's on the Mahele, he's doing the Mahele uh, Keanu. Asai is doing the constitutional monarchy and Ron Williams is doing the bayonet to overthrow. So the four of those experts. So, you know, it's also reaching out to the community because we're not everything and do all end all. We're not. But, you know, reaching out to the community and making this a collective repository that can be used by all in perpetuity. We hope to get to the point and place at some time where there can be an interest sharing of, um, you know, that people can share their lessons in or, you know, some, some sort of thing like that. In the next round, we're also going to do more of, of outreach, sort of. A lot of the responses of uh, people who filled out the surveys was, geez, they wish we could have had a Zoom meeting with them to, you know, if they had questions to guide guidance or, you know, so we're going to do a couple more of that um, in the future. Um, but really, it was a it was a hail mary. The whole keep up was a whew, geez, hope it works. Hope Cody, it can I can, can I just talk in that we're also looking to change the education system and it, not to you know fault the educational institutions, but you can't move the behemoth very easily. Yeah. And so there are two strands of Hawaiian history in the system for the last 50 years. One is basically first contact up to the death of Kamehameha. The second one is overthrow or bayonet to statehood. And there's this huge gap in the middle and no one knows who the characters are, what the actions were. It's really hard to create even a worldview. So rather than convince the Department of Education and our major institutions to make change, we're just putting it into the hands of teachers and students and right. move change from the bottom up. Right. So that's part of the goal of Keep Papa is to make institutional right. change or you know, overall change. But yeah. this is a port of entry to do that. You know, when it, that's thanks for reminding me. The first thing we did when we decided to do Kipapa was we went to look up the benchmarks. What are the standards in DOE? Because um, we thought, well, let's try and blend in, right? Let's let's try and make it all a fit and hit for teachers. That's and then um, when I found that, I just went, yeah, screw them, because because that that those benchmarks totally erase. Hawaiian agency, they told it totally wipes away all the successes uh, um, of literacy, of constitutional governance, of strategic, uh, you know, it, it's like, what? So we just threw it all away. We just went, Shh, forget them. We're just going to, you know, because this is what we need. But it's the same concept, the same concept that went, in, that went into play when um, revitalizing Hawaiian language. 
You teach the children the language will live for generations. This is the same concept. We get this information to our children and our history will live forever. I mean, that's really, it's simple, right? It's simple, but not so simple. You know, there's access, there's money, there's politics, there's, we could go on in this forever, but um, I think, okay, here we are. Are we at a point where we have questions or we, we can keep talking? Cause Hi, Anake. We have a few questions. I think some of you guys were even clarifying just to address that you guys did talk to about the access of the video or of the references, and you guys did touch upon that. Um, so I think that was a little bit of the questions I'm checking. I'm going through the chat now. Um, a lot of them was just about, you know, thanking you guys, of course, for the, all the mahalos, for the amazing resources. And then, of course, it was just the connectivity. And then we even had a question about Will it become a pookie at some point, you know, a bounded book of, you know, will it be some kind of like that? Maybe they just see so many amazing uh, <laughs> uh, uses for the Mona'o anti. So I think that's basically what it is. At this point in time, though, what we would like to offer, if you, if you guys want to go ahead and open up a few questions, we have a few more minutes. We have about five more minutes for questions for uh, for anti or on Kala folks. Anybody, questions that you guys may have, we can go ahead and put them into the chat. If there's no questions, I would invite you guys to share all your amazing aloha that you folks are sharing with them, and we want to thank them for their time and their space and making the time for us. Kaleo, um, as, Kaleo go ahead. As they are forming questions or whatever, um, I just want to address the idea of books because we do find that yeah, there's such value in books, and we've been creating resource people and resources. And so the translations that were created in the course of training are being developed as books and it's uh, hugely time consuming and and whatnot but we're just stepping into press with the translations that were done six years ago of kekumo alpuni and we're intentionally creating and it'll be a bit of a tome a bilingual text with hawaiian on the left english on the right of each page um, we're addressing what we feel is four different audiences the fluent hawaiian speaker the English only speaker and the two that are sort of in the middle um, so that it's all immediately accessible. That'll come out as a publication. It'll also come out as an ebook. Um, and we're even hoping for an audio book. So being able to develop these materials into the most usable resources is really the goal of the whole thing. Really, this this time around, we just uh... Poike and I both sent flyers to a lot of our educator, teacher, administrator type mm -hmm. friends. And um, we posted it on social media, on Facebook and Instagram. And that's really. And uh, we uh, hoped for 100. Right. And we got 850. Right. So, you know, um, and still more wanting to go after because they didn't know, they didn't read all the stuff that it was going to close. Um, so sorry about that. I mean, we just. We thought we held it open long enough, so everybody, the whole point of Kipapa was take it when it's open, download it, take it all into your own Google Drive, you know, just take it all so you have it. I saw one of the things about do you need permission to use archived historical photographs in order to distribute your edu education material? Of course, it depends on where you get them from. All of the, most of the images that we used on Kipapa were from um, um, Hawaii State Archives. And all of those materials are free to the public. You don't have to pay for them. The um, one, there was one that I used where I put the citation and not to be used because that's only with permission. All the books and resources that we shared in the library are all available online. You can get them free in Google Books or in other resources. I just put them all into one place so they're accessible um, on a bookshelf. So, um, yeah, that's oh, yeah, I just want to add in everything that you can download from us can be shared educationally. The right. only limitation is you can't sell it. You can't make a profit off of it. And that has to do with the, the copyright element. But right. it can that, all be copied right. and right. When you, you have it out in your classroom, you know, yes. Yeah. When you sign up for Key Papa, one of the things, which is where there's a two-step process because you have to agree to that. That if you're an educator, you're teaching your children. And just to clarify, our goal wasn't just teachers. It was for teachers, community educators, parents that want to teach their ohana, ohana who want to take on 
you know, I have families who have taken this information and like once a week on, on Saturday or Sunday, they sit together and they read one letter or they read one story and then they have a discussion. I mean, that's really how history, when we can turn this into our own grapevine, you know, our coconut wireless, where this is what we're talking about and this is what we're playing with. That's how our history will live when it's out in the community and people are discussing it and, and arguing it over, over it and, you know, um, but we do have a focus of teachers because we our goal is to reach the children right so reach the children so we got to reach administrators we got to reach the funders we got to reach the uh Pukia and i had a at a uh we did a session like this with um ohe had organized it for a bunch of their um teachers and administrators and stuff and so after we finished our talk uh, they asked us well, what can we do? What, what, you know, I was like, change the DOE policy, change what is, you know, because that's not okay. So collectively and together, we have to not say yes. We have, we have to not agree to that. We have to, and we, if it means taking what we teach our kids into our own hands, then that's what it means, because that's how important this is. Every people need to know the history of their own homeland before they dare to go out in Mahaoi somewhere else. Anyway, that's just my manao. I should shut up now because I'm probably getting... Okay, are we on Ani Ani Pao? On the we can be. Oh, what are we going to do? Of course, everybody is still sending all their mahalos. What I'm going to do, ladies and gentlemen, at this point, I'm going to stop the video, okay? So now we off the books, we free and clear. We don't need to worry. Oh. The stop it has ended.